So last weekend, some weirdo came into my stream and was like, yo, have you read the most recent Twilight book? And I was like, there's a new Twilight book? Do you mean like the death of Brie whatever? And he was like, no, life and death. So I look it up and it says Twilight Reimagined. So I look even more. And guys, it is gender bent Twilight. Am I five years late? Absolutely. Is this still hilarious? Absolutely. And then Reggie says it's objectively better than regular Twilight. And I was like, in what world could anything top this piece of art that was further immortalized by this teal washed piece of art? You better hold on tight, spider monkey. Also, I would just like to say Twilight in French is apparently la fascination and I'm fascinated. So I figured that in honor of Midnight Sun finally being completed, which we'll discuss in a second, and the shocking number of people that still seem to want me to talk about Twilight, even though I do have a video about Twilight on my channel, that we go ahead and read Gender Bent Twilight to determine if it really is objectively better. Spoiler alert, I don't think it is at all, but there are some things that were pretty okay, so let's get into it. Now I'm somehow both ironically and unironically a fan of Twilight. At least the first one. They all progressively get worse as they go and Breaking Dawn is really only redeemed to me by the hilarious aspects of the movie. The, the book was a nightmare to get through. But good lord do I love this melodramatic vampire tale. So this was actually written for the 10 year anniversary of Twilight as a gift, I guess, for, for readers. I'm sure when people saw Twilight Reimagined, they were like, oh man, she's finally doing Midnight Sun. Cause Midnight Sun is Twilight from Edward's perspective. I've wanted it for 12 years because she's been working on it for 12 years. And what exists so far is absolutely marvelous. There's like two to three pages completely dedicated to Edward trying to work out how he can kill everybody in the biology class so he can get to Bella. Like I just reread a bunch of it on stream and it's just, so obviously it wasn't Midnight Sun, which is now coming out in August. It was Gender Bent Twilight. Like I get it. It was a quick add on for the 10th anniversary. I think the publisher was all like, do you want to write like a foreword or a thank you letter or something? And she was like, I want to give them more than that, which is really nice. So she basically just ended up taking it as a chance to explore something for people. And I think that's pretty cool. But it sucks even more when you realize she was working on Midnight Sun and then stopped because E.L. James ended up releasing Grey, which is just 50 shades from Christian's perspective. And she had already based 50 Shades on Twilight. So it was just like another knife in the back of stolen career trajectories. So she was all like, no, I'm shelving it again. But hey, a lot of people seem to enjoy this gender bent version so much so that it's been continued in, in fan fiction form. And Stephanie loves it when people make fan fiction based on her work. Actually, she's probably fine with it in most situations. So I guess one of the main motivations for this came from criticisms that the story got for Bella being this weak, uncoordinated, damsel in distress character, but also simultaneously like too perfect of a female. And then if it had been a boy with the same features and characteristics, people wouldn't talk about that dynamic. So Stephanie wanted to show that if it was a boy, it would all kind of play out exactly the same. And obviously any human in a situation where their opposite is an immortal vampire, they're gonna be the weaker party. Like these vampires are described as being impossibly fast, strong, and just their skin is supposed to be like stone. And maybe a little bit try to help the fact that Edward seemed too controlling and stalkerish, like they do kind of chill the female counterpart out a bit, but no, no matter how you flip it, somebody sneaking into another person's bedroom without their knowledge to watch them sleep is stalkerish. And I also personally feel that Bella had a lot of moments where she was very self-sufficient. And on those melodrama complaints, which I've had my moments where I complain about like the teen death trope thing, but teenagers are pretty melodramatic. I know that because because I was one. They fall in love fast, every emotion is heightened. And that translates super well here. It's just when you kind of go back and read it as an adult that you're like, oh yeah, that was really fast and not logical. And it's because, you know, you're not a teenager anymore. Like there's definite rooms for criticism, but it's, it's not abnormal sentiments. So maybe it was the fact that I read Twilight for the first time when I was like, 14 years old, but I still think it, it is better than this gender bent version. This version of the story feels super rushed in areas where she did change things and then really drags in areas where she didn't. Like this kind of feels like a Stephanie Meyer fan wanted to imagine Lady Edward. Wait, is there gender switched Edward but not Bella fan fiction out there? Oh my God, there is. Oh, that's way better. Anyways, let's start with the obvious. Who's changed, who isn't, and what names were they given? So Isabella Swan becomes Beaufort. Now imagine where most Beauforts come from. Vampires are getting hung up on crosses, not being cuddled with. I'm sorry if your parents named you Beaufort, but at least I can relate to 
to why that would be torture for someone to call you versus Isabella. Bo is what he goes by in the story, but it just kind of reminds me of like these old Western names like Wyatt and Remington. Again, nothing wrong with the name Bo, Wyatt, or Remington. I get that Bella means beautiful and she wanted some kind of male equivalent to that, but like, did she need one? Now, first I did think it was just gonna be Edward and Bella flipped because of course, Charlie is still Charlie, Renee is still Renee. I was like, why can't it be Charlize and Renault? But no, Billy Black is now Bonnie. It turns out the reason she didn't flip Charlie and Renee is because Beau would have been born in 1987. It would have been really hard for like a dad with a flighty lifestyle and no set job to get custody of a kid over a mother who had strong community ties and a job in law enforcement. So there's a shocking amount of forward thinking to that. But honestly, overall, as the story continues going on, I have such a hard time mentally swapping characters. Like, I honestly think it would have been more interesting to leave characters as is unless you absolutely needed to switch it and just have different characters be obsessed with this new person. Like flip it up so that it's like Jessica that's trying to get his attention versus Mike instead of like swapping them. But I don't know, I'm I'm not an author. So Edward becomes Edith, but as distinctly noted by Bo, it's Edith with a Y and a knee at the end. Not a bad name, but why with a Y? Or I guess why point out that it's unusual if it's not supposed to be unusual to the reader? I don't, my brain hurts. Now I actually liked Edith as a character quite a bit. She feels different enough from Edward that it gives you something to kind of lash on there, but in a good way, she's a lot less rigid. She's a lot less, I don't know, Edwardy. But either way, to round out the cast of characters, Mike becomes Michaela with a capital K which just makes me think of it being a last name. I apologize if your name is Michaela with a capital K. This is just where my brain goes. Jessica becomes Jeremy. Eric is Erica. Tyler is Taylor. Angela becomes Alan. Jacob becomes Julie. Victoria becomes Victor. Laurent becomes Lauren. James becomes Joss. And we can't forget about the Cullen clan. Carlisle becomes Kareen. Esme becomes Ernest. Emmett becomes Eleanor. Alice becomes Archie. Rosalie becomes Royal, which is absolutely horrible. And Jasper becomes Jessamine, which I guess is in fact a real name and it's like the westernized version of Jasmine, but I just don't know. Jessamine sounds like something a musician would write a song about when they're trying to personify their addiction to ketamine into a lover. So as expected, it's almost completely identical in the beginning, but I actually have a harder time enjoying Bo as a character that I'm following. He's definitely less melodramatic, but this is a teenage romance with vampires. I think we kind of need a little bit of melodrama. But the first major shift beyond what he's wearing when he goes to the airport is when he gets off the plane and Charlie picks him up. There's this whole scene where he accidentally bumps into this tattooed guy and and then that guy's girlfriend starts like, you know, mean dogging him until she notices Charlie and then they kind of back off and it's just so weird. And it feels like it's awkwardly thrown in for no reason, but don't worry. This is just a really lazy setup for something that's gonna happen later on. Another like little thing is like in Twilight when Edward pulls the like, damn girl, you stanky face. She's like, all I smell is my strawberry shampoo. And in this, he's like, all I smell is my detergent. You couldn't have picked something other than detergent for this teenage boy to smell like? Come on, a 17 year old in 2005, he was definitely smelling like some variation of Axe. In terms of characters that were flipped that were done really well, I think Jacob becoming Julie was actually really well handled. I don't know if it's because Jacob was already a pretty laid out character, but I actually prefer Julie to Jacob. Like for how little she actually ends up being in this story, she actually really stands out as a strong character in this. So like. Good, that's, that's a point for me. So one of the first major changes is what is originally the shopping scene in Port Angeles, which is now Guy's Movie Night. And as I was reading this, I was kind of immediately hit with the, how is she gonna switch up this assault scene? Cause Bella almost gets like attacked and sexually assaulted by a group of guys. Not that that can't happen to a guy. I just assumed she was gonna switch it up. And that is where I quickly realized with that beginning horrible scene at the airport was setting up to words. They essentially set up those two seeing Bo in the airport and then thinking he's some kind of cop who just witnessed one of their criminal activities and then they decide to murder him. And it just feels so awkward and the setup felt so lazy and there just had to be an easier way to do this. Like, I feel like you don't have to set up a guy getting jumped. People get stabbed when they're getting mugged all the time. You could have set up a dangerous situation without having to do this weird airport scene. Either way, Edith pulls an Edward, saves the day. Things kind of flow out normally from here. So this is where we start getting a few more changes. Obviously all the girls try to ask him out to the dance the same way it happens in Twilight. Taylor Tyler still thinks they're going to the prom together, but this version of the story flips that up in a way that just becomes like a sitcom. So Bo finds out that Taylor's been running around saying they're going to prom together. So he storms into the cafeteria and pulls a, how dare you use me to make someone else jealous? Going like 
full telenovela. Like, listen to this. I'm tired of being a pawn in your game, Taylor. Do you even realize I have feelings of my own? And all I can do is watch while you use me to make someone else jealous. My eyes quickly darted to Logan, whose mouth was hanging open, and back to Taylor. You don't care if you break my heart in the process. Is it being beautiful that's made you so cruel? Is it being beautiful that's made you so cruel? Oh my god. But even with all these changes, she did include my all-time favorite scene from the Twilight book in which Boella compares using cough medicine to fall asleep to gratuitous drug use. This is art. Also in this flip up, if you didn't think Edith would, would get this guy on her back to run him somewhere super fast, you're wrong. The main difference being that Edith is described as this very petite person and Bo has been described as being like about at least six feet tall, but he would have been good at basketball until he started walking. So you get this nice little scene that's described as, she moved my legs into position around her waist. My face was burning. I knew I must look like a gorilla on a greyhound. Another big change in this is that I find it's a lot more sexual. Like the word sex is actually used rather than kind of like beating around the bush. Like Bo is flat out like, look, I get this might not be first aid etiquette, but like regular relationships, how do they, does it work the same? And Edith is like, sex Bo? Are you talking about sex? Like I get that the dynamics already switched up based on the progression of the other books. And I don't know if it's like, ah, you're so popular now that you can talk about sex in this young adult novel because of who you are. Otherwise you wouldn't have been able to do this, but it's very, very blatant, which I thought was an interesting inclusion. They're also just way more touchy in this. Like Edith seems to have a way better handle on herself and actually like sits on Bo's lap. And like, I don't, it's very, it's so weird. And whereas like Edward's just way more broody, Edith doesn't quite seem to be as much so. Like I do actually like Edith quite a bit as a character to the point that I don't know why she's into Bo. Another big change is actually the Volturi in this. If you don't know what those are, they're basically like the Italian vampire overlords. They basically just enforce the laws in the vampire world world, they're kind of huge dickheads. Big rule is to keep vampires a secret, so doing a great job here. I'll get to the details of that later. Then of course we get the vampire baseball scene that everyone loves. This plays out pretty standard. Baddies come through the clearing, Joss makes a move on Bo, they run him to Phoenix, there's still a dance studio, he still gets tricked into going there alone. Where, I just, I need to get this out, this was even kind of an issue in the original Twilight, when like Bella's talking on the phone and it ends up being James and not the mom. She goes into a different room and we're expected that these vampires that have super hearing and can hear things in crowded rooms from really far away can't hear the only other conversation happening in the same hotel area. I, I get that it's it's for plot purposes, but either way, but now we're now we get into the very significant changes. So the last 15 pages of this just really dissolve into something that feels like fan fiction. It's almost like she condensed what could have been an entire second book into 15 pages rather than just either making the book longer or making two books. The first major flip up is that after launching Bo across the studio, he's getting way more damage than Bella was. Edith actually can't remove the venom. It's kind of spread so far that as she's sucking it out, he would die of blood loss before she'd actually be able to remove all the venom. She also makes a point to mention that he pukes like all over himself and all over the floor while getting attacked and is essentially just rolling around in his own vomit. And that was just odd to me. And like they even mentioned again later that he's like, oh, my shirt's been changed, but I guess nobody wanted to hang out with somebody in the backseat of a car with vomit on their shirt. So he becomes a vampire and it kind of ends the way people expected Twilight to end originally, but we get the fallout of his depressed parents. Yay. And the weirdest part about this is when they're driving from Phoenix to Forks, Edith is just complaining all these really important details about what he's supposed to be while he's agonizing in the most pain of his life. And it just becomes this massive information dump about all of these Volturi details that we as readers got over the course of like four Twilight books, but in like two pages. It got super hard to follow around here again. It just seems super rushed. I don't even know what the point of adding some of these Volturi details were if you weren't planning on extending the story beyond this. I honestly just started feeling like something that she could be like, look, I changed something, it's different. But like, for what purpose? If you're gonna do that, I would have liked to have seen multiple books. And who knows, maybe she'll whip up one of these again in the future. But again, if you're gonna whip up one in the future, why you gotta rush it now? Like Volturi changes is you get a character called Melee who has the ability to take someone's, like the special vampire abilities that some of them have, like Edward can read minds and Alice has visions and like transfer it to someone else. So it turns out that because Arrow killed Marcus's wife and they know that now that they have the ability to take his power, they are like, yeah, sure, we, we can kill you now. So they kill Arrow and then they kill Caius because they knew he was in on it. So now the Volturi is now like two thirds female. I know some people were like, oh, maybe this is gonna translate into some other like 
main universe Twilight stuff where this character gets introduced, but I guess Stephanie in a Q&A actually said, I imagine that in the Bella universe, Arrow knew about Melee, tracked her down, and killed her. It's also around here that they just start dumping all of the switched up vampire stories. So like, Eleanor is still attacked by a bear. Ernest still throws himself off a cliff. Jessamine was stolen from home rather than a soldier in the Civil War. Archie was actually a mental institution employee rather than someone who was committed to one. And Royal was beaten to the brink of death by his fiance's secret lover. A lot less theatrical than Rosalie, but it still works. And when they get back to Forks, it's just everything's running immediately super smooth. There's no problem. I realized that Bella adapted to being a vampire super quickly, but I feel like there was significantly different situations around that time. And in her timeline by then, it's not as many sacrifices. She still gets to keep her parents in her life. But in this, it's like, hey, you're never going to see your parents again. And your death is going to completely emotionally crush them. But tee -hee, hunting is so fun. Overall, this is probably something that was really nice for diehard fans just to kind of have a switch up. And like I mentioned earlier, it wasn't something she had to do. It was for the 10th anniversary edition. So it did add at least something for people to see that flipped perspective. To me, it just lacks enough meaningful change early on and then just rushes when they do introduce the interesting changes that it just gets rough for me. And while I can definitely understand why some people would prefer Bo, I still... I'd still rather read from Bella's perspective. Again, Edith is a lot less stiff than Edward, which is a nice switch up. Honestly, maybe I would have enjoyed this more if I hadn't just reread Twilight in preparation for that Fifty Shades fan fiction video that I've been working on. But yeah, no, I still just prefer Twilight unimagined. But again, still very cool that Stephanie gave readers something they wanted. I know for years people were like, well, what would have happened if Bella had been turned into a vampire in the first book, either during that dance studio scene or later on by Edward. I know a lot of people actually thought the last page was Edward turning her into a vampire and people were just kind of wondering what would have happened. And this kind of gives you the glimpse into that reality. If you didn't have that four years of buildup and preparation, what would have happened? But I still had a better time reading Bella Edith fan fiction. <laughs> Anyways, that is going to do for today's video. This is probably very long, but I don't know. I'm just very excited to talk about Midnight Sun when that ends up releasing. Unless you're a diehard Twilight fan, there's probably not much of a reason to get this. Obviously, it's been out for five years now, so if you didn't already know it was out there, like, it's whatever. But yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. Please subscribe if you are new, like the video, if you're into that kind of thing. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all had a fantastic day, and we'll catch you all later. Oh, Jasmine, your apparently is so sweet. Yeah.